Good evening, friends. Very happy to be here again this evening to pray for the sick and the afflicted. <laughs> I trust that this will be a great night, that there'll be no one left that's even sick or on cots or anything when the service is over tonight. <laughs> May the Lord add his blessings. I'm just thinking I had a little too much volume somewhere. <laughs> it was a rebounding. Well, I'm feel good tonight and just happy. I just had a good season of prayer a while ago and just seemed like it, our Lord was so near. And I just asked him with all my heart if he would just let the meeting just be even a greater meeting than we had, that Amen. the poor, sick, and needy would be healed tonight, of all manner of diseases and things would be healed. I pray that God will grant it to his mercy. Now, I want to, I was just listening a few moments ago to Brother Hall's message about the supernatural. It was really wonderful. I appreciate that, that we are working by the supernatural. Everyone that cometh to God must believe that he is and a rewarder to him that diligently seek God. Now, we do not work upon what we see or what we feel, but by what we believe. Isn't that right? My voice is just right a little in. bit. It's all right. right in. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear all right back at the back, way back? Way back at the back, can you hear all right? That's fine. Thank you. Um, don't I have a very loud voice? And I'm not too big to begin with, so at, at the... When I was born, I weighed five pounds, and I got a bad start, and I haven't outgrown it yet. <laughs> but I, I wished I was bigger for one purpose. I could maybe have more room to love the Lord more. <laughs> just, just, and if it's any, if he's any dearer and better to the big people, I certainly admire them, <laughs> because he's certainly wonderful to me. And I love him with all my heart. Wonder how I ever got along those years that I lived without him. It's been. A, I was telling my little son, if there's anything that I have to regret in my life, that I did not turn to Jesus when I was a little boy, just a little bitty boy, and serve him. Now, we're going to take tonight. Our, of course, we realize, knowing that another service is going on in the city, I'm very conscious of that, of Brother Freeman's meetings, and our crowds are not very big yet. And while this is, I've just thought maybe that I would take a few minutes each night to teach just a little on the Word and kind of run just a, maybe a little series in, in the book of Exodus here. And just speak on a little while each night and watch the clock and try to get out in time that we would have a little prayer line. Now, each evening, and as Brother Hall was saying a few moments ago, if I understood him right, I was downstairs or down in another section of the church down there, that the meeting, the principle of the meeting is to inspire faith uh, that each individual would would accept Christ as their healer and, and would be healed. That's what the purpose of the meeting is for. Amen. See, it's impossible almost for me to get to each one, and I hurry just as quick as I can. If you'll notice with each patient, when I think that the appropriate faith is there, I go ahead and pray for the person. Now, it'll be just the same for each one of you out there in the audience. Each one of you that'll accept it and believe it It'll be just the same to you there as it is up here. Now, the only thing this does to the person that does come up to the platform, it'll almost could tell whether it's really, really faith or not. Now, you'd meet me on the street and say, Brother Branham, what about, I probably wouldn't know nothing about that. But now on the platform, when someone meets me, then I, it's not me that's speaking. When you hear my voice speaking, when that inspiration is on, I have no more control of that than you know what you're going to say next New Year's Day. I, I do not have no control of that. It speaks itself. It's my voice, and I'm listening to myself talk just as you're listening to me now talk. 
I hear myself what it says to the people. And, and then I know then, sometimes take a hold of their hand and I'll wait there. And, and after a while I'll hear what it speaks. I just hear myself speak talking to the people. It's a very strange feeling. And under that anointing, been at my services are so close together that it's best for me not to be too much under it at a time in one service. And Moses of old was committed, or the Lord committed to him two signs to do before the people. And he performed those signs one time, and that was all he did. It. Israel believed from then on and, and followed the leader. Well, these signs, it's not for you to follow me, but to follow what I tell you. And that sign is this, that you are to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will lead you. And then when you're told something up here at the platform, you must believe that with all your heart. And the purpose of this is that the people... There may be somebody in the prayer line tonight that I'll know have met somewhere else. Probably when that anointing was on, I would not recognize them. Sometimes I do and sometimes I do not. But if, uh, if I would, well, or now I've met two or three times I've met people like that, but very seldom. Then I have no way of knowing what's wrong with that patient or what they've done in their life. And many things, it's... If they do not wish to be told out here at the platform. But I can't help it. it. It speaks itself. Now, and if it tells you exactly what has been in your life, and you know that, you, you, you're aware of that, and you're aware, the first thing when the patient comes, if you watch them, when they come reverent, when they get real near, watch the expression on their face change. It'll change me. And I... Some of them, the picture back there when the angel of the Lord was up over me when they had the picture taken, said, Brother Bram, that don't look like you. No. It, uh, that, if when it's that close to you, it just changes you. You're, there's something different. You're, something happens. Then when the patient's coming, they'll, if they're a believer... Now, if you're not a believer, if you're just coming in through curiosity or maybe you're a little skeptic about the angel of the Lord, you'll never notice it. See, only those who are looking for God are the ones who find God. Amen. Only those, when the woman touched the hem of his garment, for she said, if I may but touch him, I'll be made well. Well, she felt the virtue went out. She got what she wanted. But those who put a rag over his face and and smote him on the face and said, Now if you're a prophet, prophesy and tell us who hit you. They didn't feel any virtue at all. They wasn't feeling for it. They didn't believe it. But the ones who believed it was the ones who received it. And that's the way it is with salvation. Those who believe God, if someone said, I do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll never be able to receive it until you believe it. That's right. You've got to believe it. For all things of God are by faith. And then when you see the person here, the benefit of having them on the platform, usually I would never have to have a prayer line. I could stand here in the audience and maybe speak to the people right out. In, I have done that. But it's so strenuous. Usually I have to wait till the anointing gets real deep. And then maybe I can single out the people or uh, the sick ones out in the audience. Many times I see uh, people that's crippled or afflicted or something like that. And I, I know what's wrong with them. I could tell them what was wrong, but that's no mystery. Anyone could see anyone was crippled. That, anyone say, well, sure, he said that person had arthritis. Well, I certainly look at him all crippled up. And uh, that man's blind. They're leading him around. Why, he's blind. Well, certainly anyone would know that. But the person that looks healthy and then go down and tell that person. Now, that's the difference. At that, There's where the mystery part comes. That's not a mystery. It's the... For the people, the children of God, to recognize that their Savior is present, you see. I, I truly believe that the coming of the Lord is nigh at hand. These things would not be taking place, children of God, unless something was going to happen. I, I do not claim to be uh, knowing all things of God. 
And I do not say that this is what the Lord has told me. For many times I say things, I believe this or believe that, like you do. That doesn't make it so. How can you say, Brother Bram, you pray for me. You believe I'll get well? Yes, I can believe it. But I won't know it until he tells me so. Then when I see the vision that is, then I know it's going to be. And in doing that, that weakens my faith a little on the other side, you see, because of looking to that direct positive side always. And that's what hurts in my meeting many times. The people watch to get into the line to get that direct positive side of what's going to happen to them. You see what I mean? And as far as I know, the best of my knowledge to all of the people that I have come before me to be prayed for, there has never been one time in all my life that I can remember praying for the sick when I absolutely saw the vision and told them that the Lord Jesus had healed them of what was well. I've never seen it. They, I've never seen it. I've seen many times, I've seen the people on platform and knew they were going to die. It turns dark around them. And I, I know they're not long. I'll say, go and may the Lord Jesus bless you. Go and have faith in God. Now, maybe he showed me that person, death is on the person. I can't overcome it. Maybe if I could sit down with that person a while, talk with them, take a long time, 20, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, and just speak to the person until God will show the vision, then there may be something told to that person that would cause them to repent of something that is maybe or some promise they could make to God that would bring uh, God's favor to them and heal them because many times God pronounces something and then he changes his mind on it. Did you know that? A king one time was told by the prophet that he was going to die. You remember that? And the prophet, after he gave his message, walked right back out of the room and the king turned his face to the wall and wept bitterly. He said, Lord, I beseech you, I've walked before you with a with a pure heart. And now he wanted to, his life spared for 15 years, so something to glorify God. And the prophet had done gone. But the Spirit of the Lord had come up on the prophet after God done told him he was going to die, said, go back. And the prophet told him in three days he's coming off his bed that God had heard his prayer. So prayer changes things. Isn't that right? The prayer changes things. So therefore, I ask the people then to go pray because it might change. Now, but each individual, and my, my business here, I see our land, the reason that I'm figuring on, this will probably be my last trip through the country for some time, unless the Holy Spirit leads. We've got many great campaigns out on the field, hundreds of them. I noticed in the Voice of Healing this month, Brother Lindsay's paper back there, there was many, many new ones that come in. And it looks like we're kind of getting in one another's way. So it's uh, too many in, even in one city. So I, I think uh, God used me to go out, which I'm thankful to let the little sparks begin to fly. And now the, the thing is kindled everywhere. Amen. And I pray that God will not only use those brothers out there, but will send hundreds of more campaigns everywhere, everywhere. And I feel that after a bit, I'll probably spend the... Most of my life in the, in the farm fields, I'll come home and, of course, I'll have to have a little finance to carry me on and then maybe have a few meetings so the people send me again back into the lands of the Africa and different places. Now, I don't believe it'll be very long for our Lord Jesus comes. Now, remember this. Now, this is not the Lord speaking. This is your brother, Brother Brandon. And the best of my knowledge, now, just remember this and... Watch it close. We are in for the end time. Watch geographically where your wars are coming down. See, watch the gog up there coming down. See, down in Turkey, and so the battles are not to be settled in Korea, but over there, in Palestine. See, we're we are near, and I. I'd appreciate it, and yesterday, I, or this morning, I believe it was, I almost wept joy when I heard it, that uh, Brother uh, Graham, Billy Graham, is going to have a meeting there in Washington. I, I was so happy for that, but I'm, I'm just a little afraid that, it's, that we've sinned away our day of grace. I, I believe we're in part. 
when we come to a place where we join up and want and would throw aside the Bible and not even offer prayer or nothing else to appease some ungodly nation that doesn't believe in God, we're in for it. That's right. Yes, sir. I've said that from the beginning. So how can two walk together except they be agreed? That's true. And when we throw off Christ, we, we refuse the cross, and now we've got a double cross, haven't we? That's right. That's, that's what it is. All right. So much. And God bless you now. As I want to read just set maybe three little uh, or four little sermonettes like or little teachings here on the book of Exodus. I want to read some out of the book of Exodus over in the, the third chapter. And I will watch the clock and hurry. And just as it gets time, then I'll cut off and take up again tomorrow night. We want to study just a little bit in the book of Exodus. How many would like that? Let's see your hands up. Just study a little bit on the church. Now, the third chapter I'll read for a portion of Scripture. wish we had time. Just uh, at home, we used to take these lessons in Exodus and Genesis and so forth and just teach them just those old nuggets and all what a time we had with them. And I thought it would... I would just like to try it again right here while we're not crowded, just for a few nights. In Exodus, the third chapter, listen closely now to the reading of the word. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mount of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now, shall we bow our heads just a moment? Our Heavenly Father, we have come here tonight for a compound reason. We've come that people might be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus, then that they, the sick might be healed by believing on the Lord Jesus. Therefore, our fathers has taught thy word, and you have worked great miracles with our fathers. And we are, are happy to be their children today to inherit the rights of being a free American, where we can open the Bible and teach and believe God and worship him according to the dictates of our conscience. We're very happy for this privilege. We ask you to bless those who have paid the supreme price on the battlefronts everywhere that's given us this hour of freedom. O oh, eternal God, have mercy. But we realize that the dark clouds are floating high now. And that they're going to get darker according to thy word. And we're so thankful to know that we're children of the light tonight. That we have the light of God in us, and we are happy that our Heavenly Father has so blessed us in this last day of pouring out His Spirit, giving us the Holy Spirit to live by and to enjoy, and now has given us great signs and wonders, mysterious things to the world, but not mysterious to those who believe in you. For we've been looking for these days. And now to think that here on the platform, in this tabernacle where once stood great man, the founder, our brother Paul Rader, and many of those great men who stood here, and tonight the Christ that they preached is coming down in great power, manifesting himself, sending forth his angel to declare his light. Oh, God, have mercy upon us. And may we pinch as it was our conscience, waking ourselves up to the realization that the time is drawing nigh. Deliverance is at the door. And we're ready for the journey. Help us to put on the full armor of God now tonight. Get ready. Buckle up. Shot ourselves with the gospel. Put the helmet of righteousness the breastplate and the armor. Take the sword and go forward now. Grant it, Lord, as full dress warriors tonight of Christ. May every demon of darkness be driven back. 
May the power of the Holy Ghost come down in this building. The angel of God appear visibly right here on the platform tonight, giving us such a shaking like we've never had before. Grant it, Lord. May many be healed tonight and saved, for we ask it in the name of thy child, Jesus. Amen. I believe that all of the old things was a type of the new to come. What Israel was in the natural, we are in the spiritual. God leading Israel naturally was what he's doing for us spiritually today. We're all very familiar with this scripture that I have just read. And we're going to try to set forth tonight God preparing for the, the journey. God setting his church in order. Then God's exodus of the church, taking it out. God's journey with the people in the wilderness. And then the last call where Joshua takes the children of Israel over into the promised land. Oh, I trust that God will make himself visible to us. So real. I don't know what more he could do. He's never done hardly anything in the ages past any more than what he's doing now. And to think that we have the privilege of being alive here tonight, well, that thrills my heart beyond my words to utter how I appreciate that what God is doing for us now in this present day. And to think that God has given me the privilege to share this blessing with his people, you, the purchase of his blood. That I, by this, that he has given, might be able to show him to you and to bring you to a closer fellowship with him, that's more than my heart can even comprehend. Yeah. Now, we all are familiar with the scripture of how Israel came down into Egypt. It was because of a famine. He was driven down there from starvation. The story is very pathetic. All the Old Testament speaking of the new. I believe in Hebrews 12 it said, Seeing that we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, that we might run with patience the race that's set before us. Amen. All right. Joseph, one of the patriarchs, sold down into Egypt perfect type of Christ, betrayed by his brethren, sold for a few pieces of silver, about 30 pieces, about like Christ was. He wore a coat of many colors, as Christ was seen in Revelations 1, sitting on a throne with a rainbow over him, the seven perfect colors representing the seven church ages, rainbow representing a covenant. He was to look upon as jasper and sardis stone which was Reuben and Benjamin, the first, the last, he that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David, the morning star. <laughs> How marvelous. And with the covenant to his churches, seven golden candlesticks behind him, each candlestick representing a church age, and we're living in the Lady of Sin. Age, the last. And he was standing with his hands out to look upon, and there, one hand like this is Alpha, the other and as Omega, as the lights went out on up to the dark ages and come down, just as it come in, so will it go out. The same kind of church, same kind of signs, same kind of people, Alpha and Omega. Oh, my. Then I think of God speaking to Joseph. After he was taken up, he was a blessed child. There's why I believe that men are born in this world to do certain things. Joseph could be nothing else but a prophet, or he was born a prophet. God foreordained Joseph to be a prophet. No matter how much cursings and kickings he got around, he was God's prophet. He had to be. Gifts and callings are without repentance. Notice. Then he was taken up 
supposedly out of the pit to have been dead like Christ was raised up. And he sat at Pharaoh's right hand when he was in his prison like Christ to his cross. There's one thief lost and one saved. So was there in Joseph, one the butcher and the baker. One was lost and one was saved. Joseph foretold them what would be their destination. And so did Jesus at the cross. And notice, then when he died, Joseph, he made mention of his bones, saying, Surely God will visit you someday. And when you go out, take my bones with you. What a perfect type of Christ, exactly. Now, those Hebrews, when they were being bondage and beaten, and the taskmasters up on them, beating them, slaves, many old Hebrew would pass by that coffin and would look in there and see the bones of Joseph. He could look up and say, Someday we're going out. For our prophet, our brother, has said that someday his bones would go before us. God's word said that they would go out of there. God had told Abraham years before. And they had a promise. And every tired Hebrew could look up on that and say, there's the promise of God. What a great promise we have today. When we stand at the grave and see our loved ones go down. A few of those flowers crushed in a minister's hand. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. Down through the old pine trees whisper the wind blowing. There's a land beyond the river that they call the sweet forever. We only reach that shore by faith degree. Notice, then we look at that tomb, that grave mound up. Then we can look over yonder in Jerusalem. There's one that's empty. He's coming again to receive those all that are dead in Christ shall come with him. God shall bring them from and the day when we bury our children and our mothers and fathers. We hear that ceremony. Then we close our eyes, look away to Jerusalem. If I go away, I'll come again to receive into myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Taskmasters and sickness may drive us. That's right, it's drove us, death has drove us to the grave. But as Paul of old, when he was ready to die and to fix a chop block to fi- cut his head off, he said, Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Death, where is thy staying? In other words, death, you're coming, you're trying to scare me, but you can't scare me. The grave said, I can hold you. You can't do it. Or in Jerusalem, there's an empty tomb. You can't hold me. Where is your sting? Show me where you can make me scared of you. I'm not afraid to die. Amen. Grave, show me your victory. You can't do it, for I can pour an empty tomb to you, and I am in him. And those that are in him will God bring with him. There you are, just as sure as he rose to the dead, the church is going up. Amen. 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 Going up to meet him. What a perfect type Joseph was, and Christ the antitype. Then we notice that years passed by and they fared presumptuously. But finally there rose up a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. God was fixing his church now to bring it out. And I believe that we fared presumptuously. In the early days there was a great persecution against religion. And as we know in Revelations and so forth where the woman fled into the wilderness and was nourished there for time, time and a dividing of time. And we're down to that end time now. The word of the little lamb that rose up in Revelation 13, a lamb, two little, probably a little horn, civil ecclesiastical power, but after, he is a lamb, freedom of religion and so forth, but after a while he spake like a beast, like the dragon, and exercised all the power the dragon did before him, a bitter religious persecution. We're nearing that time. You remember, church, that you're living in the best day that you ever will live in right now. Until Jesus comes, it shall gradually, not gradually, but rapidly get worse and worse. When Russia goes down there to get that oil, look out, that's all she needs. That's what the prophet said it would do. And we're ready for it then. So church, get ready to meet Christ. He's sending great revivals and meetings and stirring the full gospel people. Signs and wonders appearing everywhere. 
great wonders to draw his people together, and one day he shall come, the deliverer. Now, notice just before he taken them out to the promised land, they begin to cry, bitterly cry. The taskmasters was heavy. And he began to bitterly cry to God. And when they did, God had a little boy born down there, a very peculiar birth, Moses. You know the story of how he was put in the bulrushes and the, the little ark was slime and pitch. And Pharaoh's daughter raised him or was supposed to be her foster child. And when he come to the age of where he should be uh, on the work of God, why, about 40 years old, one day he went out to, and identified himself with Israel, thinking surely that they ought to know that he was their deliverer. And when he killed the Egyptians, slew him, the next day he found Hebrew brethren strobing amongst one another, and they discovered his sin and told him. And this Moses fled into the wilderness, rejected of his brethren, just like Christ was rejected of his brethren. And notice, then Moses, taken to himself, Zipporah, a wife, so one morning there, the pillar of fire came out of the heavens and dropped down into a bush. And Moses looked, and the bush was on fire, but the bush would not burn up. God was doing all of this to attract the attention of Moses. And when God saw that Moses turned aside, oh my, how today the church is in bondage of sickness. The church is crying, been crying for years for deliverance. Some of you old people here has cried to God for numbers of years. God, send the gifts back to the church. Have you done it? Many of you, years ago, sent and prayed all night at a time. And we're on the age of the march, I believe. We're ready. God's calling His church spiritual together. Just as all the church come together, the word church means the called out. Today we've come through all kinds of dogmas and denominations, and each fellow having his own idea, look through my glasses and you're seeing. But God has got to a place now that he's sick and tired of those things, and he's calling his people together and want a card. Setting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Christ coming down with them, revealing himself to them. Amen. Oh, my, I just love that. Church spiritual. Getting ready now. All right. Notice now that then when God spoke to him, attracted his attention by a pillar of fire that fell into a bush and began to burn and pop and burn. Now, it looks like if it was fire, it would have scorched the bush or burned it. But it was a supernatural fire who could burn the bush, and yet it would still be there. Amen. I'm thankful tonight for a supernatural, the Holy Spirit, God's flame of fire who can come down in the human heart, burn out all the sin, unbelief. Don't harm the person, but it purges him. Make him grow greater, be stronger, more faith. And he comes tonight, and that way he can come down into a human body, drive out the power of cancer, tumor, cataract, tuberculosis, with fire. Heavenly, Holy Spirit fire falling from God out of heaven. Why, my, that's no mystery. If he can burn inbred sin out, how much more can he burn cancer out by the same Holy Spirit? Amen. We've got witnesses on both sides, men and women. 
who were once sinners lost in sin, come to the world speaking lies, shaped in iniquity, a harlot on the street so immoral that hardly maybe a decent person would look at. The Holy Spirit can take that same woman and make a saint out of her, take the desire of sin from her. When the religions of the world met here some 40 years ago, little Dr. Magny represented the holiness religion of America. When all Buddha had their say and so forth, their beauty, the different isms put forth their beauty and their flowers and all their different flowerly speeches. Our little brother stood up. He told a story of a vile woman that lived in Oklahoma years ago who broke all the speed laws, coming through the streets, driving a carriage with a cigar in her mouth, a big gun on each side. And she'd killed so many men and done so many bloody deeds until when the law caught her, they poured tar and feathers on her and taken wires to kill her. They wouldn't, wouldn't get that close to her. When he told the story with such, uh, with such a spiritual feelings to it, until his audience was sitting on the end of their seats, ready to hear what he had to say. Then he said, Gentlemen of the religions of this world, has your religion got anything that would clean the hands of this vile woman? No one said nothing. Tears rolled down his cheeks. He clapped his hands together, jumped up in the air, kicked his heels together, said the blood of Jesus Christ will only clean her hands, but it will clean her heart. Hallelujah. Yes. The blood of Christ. Won't only clean hands, but it'll clean the heart. Make the vilest sinner a new person. Purified, cleansed by the Holy Spirit. Give them their inheritance that they lost long ago by the fall. Put them in relationship with God to become sons and daughters. Amen. It's not to stir the heart of anybody. Just as sure then as Jesus rose from the grave, so will we. Them that are in Christ, there. Then I see Moses as he turns aside to look at the bush. He sees the fire burning. Then God seen he has attracted Moses' attention. And when he did that, he said, Take off your shoes, your own holy ground. Now what if Moses said, I'll just take off my hat. That wouldn't work. He said, shoes. <laughs> That's right. Somebody said, I'll just join church and that'll be just as good. He said, you got to be born again. Amen. That's right. Join church is all right, but he said, you got to be born again or you won't get into the kingdom of heaven. That's old-fashioned preaching, but it's the truth, brother. Amen. That's right. It'll make a new creature out of you. All right. Take off your shoes. Come in respects. Your own holy ground. He's seen this pillar of fire. He said, now, I've heard the cries of my people down in Egypt. And the reasons of the taskmasters. They're groaning and crying to me all day and night. And I've come down to deliver them. And I'm going to send you down there now. Oh, my. Deliverance on the road. Yes, sir. Just as soon as he gets an order, deliverance is there. He's setting the picture together now for a great drama. I believe the God that lived in Moses' time is the same Jehovah today. And I believe now that the Holy Spirit has come up on the church, calling the people out, getting them ready. The word church means called out. God's called out of every denomination, a people, cleansing them from their sins. Filling them with the Holy Spirit, setting them aside for service for the great march that's coming. Just reminds me of here not long ago, I was asking about the picture of the Last Supper. Someone give it to me recently. I have the painting, the light in it. And it cost a man the lifetime that painted that picture. Any famous picture before it can be put in the Hall of Fame, it has to go through all the critics first. Before it can be put in the hall of fame. And then after it's passed all the criticisms. And still can stand the test. Then she's hung up in the hall of fame. The little church. 
For years, it's been pushed back. This is big words for a Baptist, but it's been pushed back. Called Holy Roller. A bunch of people that's crazy, acting foolish. That's right. I don't know we've got some impersonators. That's true, but we've got some genuine Holy Ghost material. Yes, we have. The devil will point you to the bad side every way. That's the all falls. Just remember, in there, she's been criticized and criticized and pushed back. As I said the other night, many times I look out and see these old dads out here and mothers who stood on the street corners and testified when people would laugh at them and starve them to death nearly. And here we come into big fine churches like this. Why well, I'm just running down the highway that you paved. That's true. My brother, the little church has been pushed back and pushed back. So after a while, God has come down in these last days. He set the gifts, putting his church in order. She stood the criticism. They said Pentecost and holiness will die out years ago. But it's becoming the greatest church there is on the face of the earth. Last year, nationally known, 1,500,000 conversions last year. Hallelujah. What's the matter? The gifts are in her. Churches from everywhere is fleeing to see it. Hallelujah. God's going to hang her in the Hall of Fame. One of these mornings, she'll go up in the air to meet the Lord after she's went through these hard tests. That's right. Great picture. Persecuted, laughed at, but God's bringing her out. She's held right on. You cried for deliverance. Sickness broke out among you. Diseases, cancers, blindness. That's the thing that's been harming the church. Then the church began to cry, Oh God, send the restoration of the gifts. Oh my, I hope you pardon this personal expression. But about a few years ago, I believe with all my heart the same pillar of fire that came down in the burning bush swept to this earth again. I believe it's in our midst tonight. If God could do that and bring deliverance in the days gone by, in the church natural, so will He in the church spiritual. And I believe tonight that the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel is here tonight leading the church spiritual now. Delivering them. You can only be delivered by faith. God went down there and told Moses, Set yourself, go down there and tell the people, I'll harden Pharaoh's heart because he don't believe. And did you imagine that how man that reject light when God went down there with Moses? It wasn't Moses, it was God. And God said, I'll send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee to the place that I have prepared. Is that right? Amen. And when the children of Israel seen this angel he was a pillar of fire is that right amen I'm just old fashioned enough to believe that God is the same yesterday today and forever that the same God with the same power now when he appeared back there first he was a whirlwind in a bush to me when he appeared and I come as Moses of old to tell you not to follow me. Follow Christ. Believe Him. That He's here, here to heal all the sick and the needy. You believe it? And I believe He's here to heal those who have need of Him. Save those. Put those in harness of God. Do you believe that? Send them out to be soul winners and to preach the gospel. How marvelous He is. How good. Now notice in the old days when God told Moses, Now you go and I'll send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you to the place which I have prepared. Beware of Him. Obey His voice. For He will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in Him. That angel was the angel of the covenant which was Christ Jesus. The people, many of them, did not believe it. Those who did not believe perished. Those who did believe went on into the promised land. And the man who reject light went into total darkness 
And I believe today those who reject the Holy Spirit and the light of God, the days of miracles and so forth, go out back into total darkness. Did you see how Pharaoh's heart, how dark it got? He did not have nothing to do no more with the Israelites. He showed them no favor because he hardened his heart against the light. And man who hardened their heart against the light walk in darkness. Amen. Time's up. Brother, sister, in the name of our Lord, please get me right now. What am I trying to say to you? That God who came out in the old days and led the church of God out of the Egypt, the bondage into freedom, has come down again in the same manner to lead his church spiritual out of bondage of sin first by the Holy Spirit, sickness next, and the third step is to go into glory, take this mortal, make it immortality, the transfiguration of the human bodies to transform them into the perfect image of the Son of God. Please believe with all your heart. I can't make no one believe. I, I can only I can only speak what I, my convictions is to be truth. And if I speak the truth, surely God will confirm the truth and will heal the sick and the needy. Now, as I pray for the sick, I want each one of you out there to be to be a Aware of this, that the Holy Spirit is right out over this audience tonight to heal anybody that's in the audience. Now, <clears throat> this may be a little different from what you've, you've seen a brethren pray for the sick. I can only do as God tells me to do. I can only say as He says for me to do. And if I tell the truth, then God will testify that I've told the truth. Now, what I'm afraid of is this, dear friends. What I'm afraid of is that was back there, it'll have to be that way. Because when our master, when Moses came, many refused Moses because he was a man. When Jesus came, many of them refused Jesus because he was a man. Said him being a man, make himself equal with God. Now he was God manifested in the flesh, so there'll never be a man like him on earth. That's right. There'll never be a man like him. But he ordained certain things to be done. And then it's so hard sometimes for people to see that. Because a man said so. He said, I'll do a work in the last days. Though a man bring it, they will not believe it. That's right. He, that's the scripture. How many knows that scripture? He'd do a work. Though a man would bring it. To speak it. Now, it's hard. The hardest thing that God has ever gotten to do or had to do was to get one mortal to believe another. You'd believe anything almost but a, a one person believing another. That's a hard thing. And I've, I have just thought this. For years, I've tried, ever since I've been out, to stand back and try to keep out of the picture just as much as I possibly could so they would see the Lord Jesus. And stand back. And I want you now to look to what I'm pointing to. Not because I'm telling you this, that the angel of the Lord... How many seen the picture of it back there at the counter? Let's see here. You should see it. I wish I could afford to get them and give them every one to you. It's just about cost is what we got of them there. And we'd be glad if you get it with just a very few of them left that we had. But first they had it so copyrighted and everything that we couldn't even touch it by no means. But... I got a hold of it. And there they're charging so much for it and everything because they made thousands times thousands of dollars out of it over there in Houston and around. And then when I got a hold of it myself, myself, I let it go out to the people just at the cost. First, I was afraid to touch it. There is the same supernatural being. I say this as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, fearing God, knowing that someday I must stand before him in his presence to give an account for every word that I've said on this earth, I realize that. And I may be wrong 
And if I am wrong, Almighty God forgive me, for I don't mean to be that way. But a while ago when I made a, a personal, just a little personal saying about myself, about ten people got up and walked out. <laughs> well, there it is. If people were concerned about your soul, friend, you'd sit down and solve the things through and not be so cut and dried in your own ideas. Someone's got to go to heaven and someone's going the other way. So I guess there you are. They have ears, but they can't hear eyes and they can't see. Is that right? Now, I want you to know that that angel of God is no more to do with me than it is to do with you. That it's an angel sent down from heaven. And if you don't believe angels are ministering spirits sent from the presence of God, then you don't know the Bible. Yes, sir. Someone said, Brother Branham, angels is only for the Old Testament. Wow, that's an error. The new church had more angels ministering than what the Old Testament did. Yes, sir. Well, you say the Holy Ghost leads the church. That's correct. The Holy Ghost is over all. This is the body. And it's true. But there's also ministering spirits sent in the presence of God. We know that Mary and all of those, they've seen angels. And we know the new church seen angels. How about you say, you believe Philip had the Holy Ghost? Philip the evangelist? After the Pentecost, he had the Holy Ghost, didn't he? But who was it told him to go out to the desert of Gaza? The angel of the Lord came down. Is that right? When he's having that revival at Samaria. Peter had the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that? And while he's having a prayer meeting for him in John Mark's house, the angel of the Lord, what was it? A light shined in the window and the angel of the Lord touched him and dropped the shackles off of him and put him outside the building. Is that right? And Peter had the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Paul the Apostle had the Holy Ghost. Do you believe it? But after 14 days, after no sun, moon, stars, Paul was absent for a long space down in the gallery praying. And he came out on the deck and said, Be of a good cheer. For the angel of God, whose servant I am, appeared to me last night and told me what things would be. And I believe God. It'll be just as he showed me. Is that right? The whole book of Revelations was showed John by an angel. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify. Is that right? So angels are ministering spirits, usually come in a form of lights. And I truly, personally, as I started to say a while ago with my Bible in my heart, I believe that the angel of God, I've seen it since I was a little boy. In that little cabin, they told me, come in, that you seen the picture the lady drawed last night of the little cabin where I was born. That doesn't make me even equal with the church or the people. That's right. It isn't the idea today who's great and who's not great. The idea of it today is to get people to believe the Lord Jesus. Now, God always works through man. Man is God's agency. Do you believe that? Jesus said, as you have believed in God, believe also in me. Now, the people that believed in God crucified him. Is that right? Thinking they were doing God's service. Now, I want to be honest with you. I think and believe that the only way I can see that God sent his angel down I've seen it many times. I was, it's, I just happened to be born at that time or somehow to God just had mercy upon me and give me the privilege of taking this out. That doesn't mean even I'll be saved. I may be lost. May be lost at that day. If I am, I'll love him no matter where I am. If I've got a conscience of him, I'll still love him if he turns me down. I'll love him with all my heart. Now, I believe he sent his same angel. I have seen it. I've told people, hundreds of Christians seen it. Come down visually before 10,000 people one day when I was baptizing. They looked at it. They see it. The papers carried articles of it. Said it looked like a star appearing over a Baptist minister while baptizing at Jeffersonville. I seen it up there near Fort Wayne, Indiana. That night when I was standing there and it come right down through the building, I was praying for a little boy, crippled. And there's a Nazarene girl playing the piano there. The great physician now is near. And I was praying for the little boy, and I thought the custodian turned the light in my face. And I thought, that's ill-mannered. I looked up. Here come that whirl of fire. Come right to me where I was at. 
I dropped the little boy or he jumped out of my arms or something. His little feet was drawn down by polio. And his, he hit the floor. His little feet become normal. I give you the mother's address. And those. There he started walking off. His mother fainted when she seen the little lamb. The angel of the Lord was still near. The Nazarene girl looked up. And when she seen what had happened, she jumped up on the piano and ran away. And her hair fell down. She began screaming and shouting. And the piano played the song completely through. The great physician now is near the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks to drooping hearts to share. No, there are 1,700 people rushed to the altar, giving their hearts to Christ. When they seen the ivory keys of that piano moving back and forth, the great physician now is there. I tell you, God's still God. Amen. Here at Camden not long ago, when I was trying my best to explain to the people, they were sitting starchy down to the audience. I said, I will not have to speak farther. Here he comes now. Here he come down through the audience, whirling around. A minister from California by the name of Adams up here rushed to me. The light was so he stopped and shut his eyes like that. And a photographer sitting close took the picture. There it is in my book. Then down at Houston, Texas, one of uh, own, out of my own faith, the Baptist church, a minister discussing before many, many thousands of people. There in a big stadium, there was all... Uh, uh, Discussing, and this minister said, I'd like to see that miracle worker. I'd like to see him just acting smart. And Dr. Bosworth, who was the manager at that time, said, I know Brother Bram's in here. I was up in Balcony 30. He said, If he wants to come down and dismiss the audience, all right. When I walked down, I said, Brethren, I only testify for the truth. I am not a divine healer. I said, My literature is published practically in every language under heaven. I spoke direct or indirect to around five or six million people, and never did I ever say that I was a divine healer. But to the contrary, I said, Jesus Christ is the only healer there is. I said, He has sent me with signs and wonders. I said, which is infallible. I can prove that tonight. I said, that's infallible. If I speak the truth, God will testify of me. If I speak not the truth, he'll have nothing to do with me. And about that time from heaven, here he come whirling down. Where was that before? 30,000 people there at World Down. And a photographer who had been hired on the American Photographer Association come there to take six pictures of the man that was holding the debate by the enemy. He snapped six pictures of him, then they asked all of them to look life and time and them reporters to get back, take no pictures because they sell them. And this man run forward and shot a picture of it. And that night, he was an Orthodox Jew. The other man was with him was a Roman Catholic. They took the picture home, put it in the, the assets to develop it, and to find out. And when they brought out my enemy's picture, not my enemy, I wouldn't say that, he was an enemy of Christ, saying it, he did even denied healing of Christ. He said, Lazarus died. Jesus paid, was supposed to rise him again. said, then he died again. He said, when this corruption puts on incorruption, this mortal put on immortality. Dr. Bosworth said, I believe every word of that. But we're talking about divine healing, the earnest of our salvation. That's what we're speaking of. If there's no divine healing, there's no redemption of the body. We have the earnest, the down payment of our salvation now. Amen. Notice. And then when the man pulled out those six pictures of the minister that was debating at divine healing and I was a devil and so forth, every one of them was solid black and blank. There's his name and address. Send to the American Photographer Association and find out. When he pulled out the one he snapped, there was the angel of God's picture whirling around. Where was that? The first time in all the world's history that a supernatural being was ever photographed. It was rushed to Washington, D.C., copyrighted, sent back and given to George J. Lacey, G. Edgar Hoover, examiner. It kept it two days at the Shell building in Houston. And when he come over there and they all sat out there together to find out what it was all about, he said, whose name's Branham? I said, mine, sir. He said, stand up. He looked said, Mr. Branham, you'll die like all mortals do. But as long as there's a Christian civilization, your picture will never die. He said, because it's the first time in all the world's history that a supernatural being was ever photographed. He said, the old hypocrite has always said, scientifically, you can't prove there is a God, but said, that has to be changed now for your scientifically, the angel of God was there and the light struck the negative. There it was. There he signed, wrote out a big document, signed his name to it. There it is right back there. You look at yourself. There's the angel of the Lord. Brother, sister, if I don't come here tomorrow night and you never see me again unless I'm in a casket somewhere, 
I still say that God has testified that I've told the truth. The church knows it by signs and wonders. The scientist knows it by scientific research. And this same, I believe that's the same pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel. It's not me, it's Him. He can fail to come tonight. I have nothing to do with it. It's your faith that believes that it brings it down here to this present tense. Hallelujah. Don't think I'm excited. I'm not. I know what I'm speaking about. The angel of God on the water of the pool of Bethesda, it was not the water that done the healing. It was the angel that was on the water and the faith of the people had stepped into it. Jesus said, I can do nothing in myself, but what the Father showeth me to do, what I seeth the Father doeth, that doeth the Son likewise. It's your faith. God has to have some sort of an object. He sent His Word. You're, that's the real foundation there. The Word. Then He finds out that people have misconstrued it and said it this way and that way. Then when He sees the end drawing eye, the time for deliverance again, He sends an angel down out of heaven. It verifies, it proves it scientifically through the church by the witness. Today, if Jesus should come today, the world is without an excuse. Amen. Here. Someone said, Brother Bram, aren't you afraid to make such statements as that? No, sir. I stood before tens of thousands, critics sitting everywhere. I've never seen a time but what God always brought the deliverance. I've seen the critics come. A hypnotizer wants us to go to come and hypnotize the brother. Yeah, why well, did you? And the man's paralyzed yet tonight. That's right. That you child of the devil. Why do you try to deceive God? One come to the platform one time making out something. A minister of a certain church. His sins was called out and he fell on the platform. We're not living in the days of playing church. We're living in the days when Jesus Christ is making himself manifest to his church. The proof to his word that he might be fulfilled. These things that I do shall you do also. Amen. I'm thankful to be alive tonight. I'm thankful for the privilege to witness of my Lord to the power of his resurrection. Yes. And if no one in the world ever believes it but myself, I believe it with all my heart. But I'm thankful to give witness to tens of thousands, yes, and to the millions that believe it. And believes it, and I believe that God's going to let me live to pack it until all around the world it's been circulated. I believe when I get into those dark lands of Africa over there, where those poor people is deprived and set back. I believe there will be literally thousands times thousands of them except our Lord Jesus. When they see His power and feeling and sweetening in different places, when you see them miracles raised up to tell the people even, and they're speaking their own language and tell them what it was, and they'd be perfect every time they'd fall by the hundreds at the altar and repent of their sins. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father... Oh, my heart gets warm, real warm. The old world is judgment right, and it won't be long till it'll be over. But, oh, Father, while the hour of visitation is here, grant that your children will see, Lord, quickly. May great faith be built, translating faith, great faith that'll just make the people be ready for the great translation. Now, they're sick in here tonight, Lord. They're needy. Help me that great pillar of fire that showed there in a picture. Lord, that I feel moving in my soul now, quietening these nerves from... I believe, Lord, that you're here to make manifest that what I've said. Grant tonight that your people will be caught away on the wings of faith, flying beyond this vaultry, sense-bound world bound to their senses. Grant tonight that they'll break out into that realm of faith beyond the senses and exception, believe and walk from this building and be made well. Grant it, Lord. For we ask it in the name of thy Son, Jesus. Amen. 
You'll love him. Honestly, tomorrow night, I'll try to get this a little earlier. I love you, and you got such a respond out there. I don't get a chance very often to push my soul out like that and feel good. I just get a great big loving something out of it. it just, last time when I was here, Brother Baxter was here and preaching hard, and I just want to talk to you <laughs> so much. I, did, I started preaching one Sunday, and the Holy Spirit caught me away, and the first thing I know, was somebody had me outside, and I never did really get to finish up. So I... I thought, oh, i just like to get a hold of that audience sometime and set them for a few days like that till we build up to a certain place like that to a climax. I believe God will sweep over this building. May He grant it and just heal every person in here before this service is over. Oh, I want to see it so bad. Right here where Mrs. McPherson went down, Paul Rader went down, great warriors of faith has went down here. Oh, God, let me do it, is my prayer. Let me stand here. Let me bring that faith that they've taught to a realization to the people where there will be a city-wide sweep everywhere. That men and women will realize that the great physician now is near the sympathizing Jesus. Yes, that's what I want to do. Over on the East Coast, they always holler and tell me, why are you going to the West Coast? Everybody pulls right to Los Angeles. Maybe that's God's place. That's right. Right here is probably where judgment will strike. And that's right. Let's get ready. My, this will probably be the first place it'll be hit right in here. So, church, hold of God's unchanging hand. Pray. How many of you pray this week that I'll see my prayer answered? That God will sweep us something over this building that will heal everyone that's in the divine presence. I seen it one time in Vandalia, Illinois. Is anybody here was at the Vandalia meeting that night when that great collapse fell down? In the meeting like that, and every wheelchair, every stretcher, every blind person, every deaf, dumb, every one of them was perfectly healed, plumb to the end of our audience. They just piled the things in the corners like that, 20 or 30 of them in the corner, and God, how he worked. I want to see it again. God, grant it in California is my prayer. That was one of the great feelings of me returning back again. I want to see it. I love Paul Rader. Oh, I was a little boy, set at his feet back there when he was teaching. He preached. I remember one of his sermons he preached when he was in some land and all oh, what taking place. And he, he's sitting on a log saying, I'm riding on it, I'm riding on it. He had malaria fever or something other, done blacked out. And God healed him and he believed it. I'm standing in his platform tonight. God have mercy. Yes. May God grant the great healings. Now, let's call a prayer line. Where did we call from last night? One. All right. Where, uh, did you give out what today? All right. Let's start somewhere over. Let's get 80. Start from 80 tonight. What, what's, your, what's the letter? S. S. 80. 80 to 90. That'll be 11. Let's try them first. You, you here now, it's crippled in the wheelchairs and things. Well, you just, uh, you just keep watching and look this away. And if you've got a prayer card, hold it up. I don't see, but about two or three with, with prayer card. Watch the... The different ones now in these chairs, and they line up quickly now. Let's sing, if you'll, a great physician now is near. Oh, let's everyone believe it. He's going to show himself tonight before the audience. If you'll just give me a few minutes, and everybody be reverent now. Just a few minutes now. Oh, Father, help me do, Lord. Speaking now, the hour is getting late, but I pray, God, that your angel will anoint thy servant like never before. Grant it, Lord, in these next few minutes. Grant there will be more healings done than ever been done here in the last revival that I had, Lord. Grant it. In Jesus' name, I pray. The great position now is near the sin of Sweetest name on my 
Everyone be just as reverent as you can. This brother says he drove 500 miles. Dar's dying in Pasadena with a cancer and said, Oh, have mercy, have mercy. Dear Jesus, please. The meeting's just starting now. Grant, Lord, it just now that the same angel that came into the prison bars where Peter was laying bound with his feet and hands, he couldn't get up. He was going to be killed the next day. But down at John Mark's house, they were praying. And then the angel shined through the window, and Peter was delivered. Grant just now that the angel that I have spoke of, the angel of God, will shine into that hospital where that woman's laying bound by that demon. May his power be broken. And may she be delivered as Peter of old be brought out of the hospital and turn free to serve the Lord. Hear the prayer of your humble servant as we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Go now, and as you believe, God is going to grant it to you. Amen. All right, bring your patient. Have faith now. You believe, do you, Dad? You believe. Let me hear from him. Let me hear from him. Amen. He feels his presence now. He believes that God has done the work. How many believe with me now? That's right. Now it's late. And if everyone will be just as reverent as you can for a few minutes now, don't stir if you possibly can for a few minutes. Anointing is great upon me just now. Look, friends, I, I'm telling you from my heart, see, just as sincere as I can, the angel of the Lord is here now. The angel that I speak of, the one that's there on the picture, is right here now. That is right. Believe now. I want to talk to the people. You be just reverent. Believe with all your heart that God will grant it. Maybe the people get even healed without discerning their conditions to see what's wrong with them. Everybody reverent. How's, good evening, Mother. Good evening. <clears throat> it's kind of shook me just a little, too, and I, I want to kind of quiet myself as I talk to you. Um, you love him? You love him with all your heart? I love him with all my heart. With all your heart. Yes. yes, ma'am. Been serving you for some time, dear yes. Yes, ma'am. Since a little child, a little girl. Yes, ma'am. That is right. You started this mission. Come a long ways, and now you're bothered with a nerve trouble, yes, isn't that right, sister? Years, yes, yes ma'am. You've been, had you've had everywhere tried to have, you've had many specialists to look at you, yes, haven't you, to see if they, and no one knows what causes it, is that? Don't know, there's nothing wrong That's right. All right. This what is speaking now knows for it. Yes. Our Heavenly Father, be merciful to this mother as she's standing here. She wants to be healed. She sought many doctors, but none can do her any good. Like the woman with the blood issue, she had done many things and spent all of her living with doctors. None could heal her. But she said within her heart, if I can touch his garment, I'll be made whole. And this woman has been to many doctors as has seen them. Examine her, see him shake their head, telling her to get next to herself. As she witnessed back on this microphone that it was so, grant large your blessings up on her. Poor thing. She wants to live. She's getting age. But you appeared to Abraham when he was a hundred. And you give him a promise and he bleeds you for 25 years before it come to pass. But he counted those things which were not as though they were, and you rewarded him. Age means nothing to you, Father. You're divine and you're the Creator. Help me to have faith for her. Seeing her there many times being prayed for and in prayer lines. But, oh, eternal God, hear the prayer of your servant tonight. Give her a relief at this time, and she'll believe you. Thou demon, oh, you've hid from the doctors, true, but you can't hide from God. Come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up your hand. Say praise the Lord. Go on off the platform. You're well. Let us say praise the Lord. Our 
to bring the lady. God healed her. That is right. You believe me as God's prophet? You want to be healed? Forget about being nervous. You're already healed, sister. God has made you well. God bless you. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Usher, cut a two down there. It's being... All right, everybody reverend. All right, bring the lady. Come quickly. Believe on the Lord. Now he's here in a great power. You remember they led the lady to the platform. There she goes walking out. Everyone ever believing. You believe, sister? All right, your tumor has left you, sister. Go off the platform and you're taking Say, praise the Lord. All right, bring your patient on. God bless you, brother. Go on, rejoice, and be well. Amen. How do you do, sister? You believe me as God's prophet? With all your heart, you want to get rid of what you want to be, you want to get rid of your arthritis, don't you? Raise up your hands and say, Praise the Lord. Now jump your feet up. Now go off the platform, believe with all your heart, and you'll be healed. Say, Praise the Lord. That's what I'm trying to get you to pray for. Right. Let's say, Praise the Lord, everybody. Believe now. Lady stumbled on that. I'm afraid of that. <laughs> all right, bring the lady. Just a minute. Just a little afraid she missed it, but wait, maybe I can get her a minute. How do you do, sister? Look this away. Do you believe with all your heart? Got to wear glasses. That's mystigmatism from your eyes. But you're nervous, aren't you? I see you. Yes, you got stomach trouble, have you? Peptic ulcers in the stomach. Go home and eat what you want to. Jesus. Let us say praise the Lord. He's your friends. He, he, if you believe him. All right, bring the next patient. Everybody, Reverend, have faith. Here stands faith by my son. You believe, don't you, Mother? You want to be healed? All right, forget you ever had a cancer. God just heals you. I mean, go off the platform and say, Praise the Lord. Let's say, Praise the Lord, everybody. That's the way to believe the Lord. Have faith. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Is that right? If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? If I lay my hands on you, would you be healed of arthritis? Go in as you have received. Believe it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. An old mother sitting here in a wheelchair. She's happy about the rest of them being healed, aren't you, Mother? You're trying to have faith, aren't you? I see your conditions. You've, you, you're, you've been paralyzed, haven't you? That right. On the right side mainly, you've got a paralytic stroke. You're suffering with a gallbladder trouble too, aren't you? You have a gallbladder kind of a nervous condition. Now, if you believe with all your heart, I just have faith. There's somebody behind right there, sitting there, pulling on the same thing. I'm, you see what was wrong. I see it coming. Just keep praying just for a minute. All right, everybody believe. Come on now. Bring their patient right quick. Everybody reverent now. I keep praying, sister. Looking this way. You do this. You look and believe it. God has told. This is the truth of what I'm telling you about. You believe it? Have faith now. How do you do, sister? You believe with all your heart? You believe our Lord Jesus is here to make you well? Now, we're perfect strangers, aren't we, sister? Now, just a minute, I want to talk to you just a little bit. I feel it shaking me, but I, I want to talk to you just to see what the Lord will say. You love him with all your heart? Are you conscious of this something near now, aren't you? You know that there's something in there that's taking place. Now that is the Spirit of God. You're you have a you're worrying about something. You're bothered, upset, and it's it's nervous for one thing. You're real nervous, aren't you? Kind of a mental nervousness, kind of causing you to all have all kinds of funny feelings and so forth. Isn't that true? And that mainly works on you in the afternoon. 
long, late, even when you get a little tired and run down. And you, that has caused the trouble. Uh, if I can just get to it, just keep praying now, just a minute. It's, that's what's caused your trouble. It, it's from a nerve condition. Now, I want you just to remember that I, I'm talking with you just as Jesus talked to the woman at the well. And this, sister, this is what's standing here. Is not your, this is your brother, but that what's speaking and knowing your heart is the Spirit of God. Do you believe that? Oh, yes, I see what's your trouble. You have a tumor, don't you? That's right, isn't it a tumor? That's right. You believe that God's going to heal you? In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing. Let us say praise be to God. Wonderful. All right. Bring the lady to Billy right here. Come, sister. All right, now, everyone, Robert, just a few moments now. We... Now, sister, I want you to look this away so I can kind of get at the top and just a little to you. Now, sometimes it, it depends on how long you talk to the person, how it reveals. I have to come in contact with you. Sometimes I look around people of great faith and just speak what's wrong with them and quickly they get healed. But I'm trying to fight that off now, you see, to see just what is going to take place. Now, do you believe me as God's servant? You believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ has sent me to pray for the sick, and if I would, should lay my hands upon you, you believe that that which you're now feeling, coming this between you and I now, is the Spirit of God. You believe that with all your heart. All right, sister. You've suffered quite a while with what's wrong with you. You've been prayed for before. You've been in lines, had prayer. You had prayer at home for it. You're suffering with a heart trouble, isn't that right? Yes, sir, it's a nervous heart. Now, I, you, you believe that God will make you well if I'll ask Him? Come here. Oh, Jesus. Now, realizing this number one enemy takes more people than anything else, you sent your delivering angel to deliver the people. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. God bless you, sister. You may go rejoice and happy. Say praise the Lord. All right, come ahead, lady. All right, everybody, Reverend. You believe, sister? I want you to look this way now. Have faith. Believe in God with all your heart. What do you think about all this? Think it's wonderful? You believe it's the Spirit of the Lord? You believe it that what you feel now is the Spirit of the Lord? I see down your path it's been shadows, hasn't it? Many shadows. Now, everyone, Reverend, I just, it kind of, I don't see just exactly for the sister now. <clears throat> Remember, friends, I have to see this. This has to come. I'm trying not to touch her body. If I touch her body in a moment, it would probably tell me what was wrong. But I'm trying to do it by seeing, to see if I can see a vision you see just before it happens. Everyone believe. How many believes that God's able to do this through his servant? Or, now, Satan's trying to battle me here. Just a minute. I want you to just, uh, just look this way, sister, and believe. I want you just to talk to you just a moment. Um, you're, you're truly made up your mind that, that this is truly God's way of healing you. Is that right? You believe it with all your heart. You're nervous, aren't you, sister? You're, you're very nervous now. Uh, now, you, you, can't, you feel there's something strange around you. That, ain't, that isn't going to hurt you. That's the thing that will heal you if you're ever healed. Because I believe it's the Lord Jesus. I feel, yes, it's in your, you got kidney trouble, haven't you? It's in your back, that's right. All right, come here and be healed. Oh, God, author of life, have mercy upon this woman before she gets this uremic poison and kills her, Lord. Satan's determined to send this woman to a premature grave. But, Lord, I come tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Satan, turn the woman loose in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke thee. Amen. You believe. Go rejoicing and be happy. Let us say praise the Lord, everybody. All right, bring the lady. All right, everybody, reverend. Just a moment. Come forward, mother. I see someone on the crutch here. Now, 
I wait, maybe it'll tell just what caused her to, to be crippled in just a moment. So that you'll see that the Holy Spirit works on the crippled the same as it does on any. Now, I can heal the woman. God knows that. But I can, by the grace of God, by this gift, I can tell her what's wrong with her and what's caused it and so forth. That's right. Now, I could stand here and pray for you till I got to be a real old man. It would never heal you. But you can't stand here without me telling you what's wrong with you and what's in your heart. Because that's a gift that God gave to me. That's to my to work with it as God will let me. And but now to heal, Jesus has already done that. Now I'm going to talk to the lady. Now, Mother, I I want you to believe with all your heart that our Lord Jesus is here. Now we're strangers, aren't we, Mother? We've we never met in life. We're strangers, and never. And now, do you believe that by the grace of God, I'll be able? To help you through prayer, you, you believe it. And you believe that what I ask him, he'll grant to me? Now, if I, if I asked you, if, if I, you know, we're, I know nothing about you. It's just, no, I don't know nothing about you. But I'm trying to speak with you. You're, you're human, Mother. You've got a spirit that I have to contact also by this gift. And as your faith pulls it down, it comes over me and speaks itself. See, it's not me operating. It's you, you see. You're the ones doing the operating. Now, I'm, I just they're talking to you. Do you love him with all your heart? With all your heart. With all your heart. God bless you, Mother. God grant you a closer walk with him, Mother. Yes, Mother, it isn't that cane that's bothering you. You have cancer. Isn't that right? It's cancer. That's why you're weak on it. Is that right? Come here and be healed. Our Heavenly Father, help our dear sister. Oh, merciful Father, grant the healing of our sister. Thou demon called cancer, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave the woman. Come out of her. Believe now, Mother. Put your old cane on your shoulder and walk on out of the building. Let's say praise the Lord. Everybody. There was something shook me at that time when I called that cancer. There's uh, just a moment, if I can find it in the audience. Everyone reverent now. The little boy. I see you got a prayer card in your hand, honey. Uh, just a moment. Look, this. It's not cancer there. Just. Here. Here it is. It's a lady laying on the cot here. Isn't that right, sister? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and God will heal you of the cancer. Amen. You've had it for a long time, haven't you, sister? It's been bothering you for years. Isn't that right? I see a long space of darkness. Isn't that right, Dad? Do you believe she can be healed? With all your heart you do? Mother, do you believe it? Now look, I'm going to tell you your trouble. Here's your trouble. You belong to church. That's right. But you're not as far along in God as you ought to be. You want, isn't that right? You're trying to have faith. You belong to a certain denomination of church. Isn't that right? I could call it right now, but you wish for me to call it. Would that help you? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Methodist church you belong to. Either Methodist or, It's a Methodist church. You know. Is that right? Amen. All right. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll heal you that cancer right now where you're at. Amen. Amen. Believe it. Accept it. Raise up. Throw your clothes back. Walk out of the building and be healed. Go home. God bless that woman. God heals Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian. She's standing up to accept her healing. Out of the crutch, out of a cot, let us say praise the Lord. Take her right on out. Walking by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus. Going out the floor, bound back to hear the voice of Jesus. Sweet personal insurance, sweet sweet. Jesus. 
All right, be seated now in just a moment. I don't know what happened to the woman. Just a moment now. Everyone or ever, there was somewhere I spoke to a, spoke to a little boy. I believe it was right here. I seen something on the little boy, but I didn't get to get what it was. Honey, you're sitting there, a mighty sweet little boy. I want you to stand up just a minute. I want you to look at Brother Branham. Do you believe me, honey? You believe. Well, bless your little heart. I've never met you in my life. I don't know who you are or nothing. But I want you to look this way and I want you to... Do you believe if our Lord Jesus was here... You remember when he took up little boys like you and blessed them and, and said, Suffer little children to come to me. Didn't he? Well, now, if he was here tonight, what would he do for you? He would heal you, wouldn't he? I want you to lay your prayer card down there in the seat. I want you to come up here to me. Something wrong with him. He's too many pulling right in there. I can't find out what it is. If I can get the little fellow here by myself. Come here, little man. Now I want you to look this way. A fine little boy. <laughs> yes, honey boy. It's a rupture. Is that right? And the rectal, I believe. Is that right? In rectal trouble. Okay. All right, little boy. Come here. Jesus has gone up to heaven. But he sent Brother Branham to lay hands upon you. You believe this? Father, I obey the commandments of my Lord. That this boy will get well from this trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask it. Amen. God bless you. Let us say praise the Lord. Oh, my. Be reverent. How wonderful. A little lad. He wants to shake hands with them all there. Isn't he wonderful? What you looking so strangely about, sister? You want to be prayed for, don't you? You're trying. You, you said in your heart, if I could get up there, I'd be healed. Is that right? Lay your prayer card down and come here. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Come around here just a minute. Good faith. The reason I'm bringing her up here is because she wants to come. It's in her heart to come. She just wants me to touch her. She's already healed. She wants me to come and touch her. Wasn't that a very strange feeling come over you when you, I said that to you? Come here just a minute. Now your female trouble is gone, sister. You may go off the platform and charge me. Serve the Lord now with all your heart. Let us say praise the Lord. The colored sister sitting there, she wants to be healed too, don't you, sister, sitting there on the end? There. Uh-huh. Stand up on your feet. All right? You want to be over that nervousness, don't you? Isn't that right? Raise up your hand and say, praise the Lord, and be over it. God heals you now. Amen. Let's say, praise the Lord. How many believe with all your heart? Stand up on your feet. Let's be healed, every one of you. Oh, Jesus, Son of God, heal Everyone, I just touched a little baby with eczema, broke out all rash for God to heal it. Lay your hands on one another there, you people. Lay your hands over on each other. That's right. Oh, God, have mercy just now. Heal those at your knees. May the Holy Spirit fall upon this audience just now and heal every one of them. Satan, turn that people loose. 